Section 7 of The Great Chicago Fire by Various Authors The Chicago Fire and the Insurance Companies Part 7 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Great Fires of History Among the great fires of modern history, the mind naturally reverts to the conflagration in London in 1666 as the most destructive. Relatively such it was, for it continued four days and nights, and consumed nearly five-sixths of the city within its walls. Yet although more than thirteen thousand houses of the description then common in the thickly settled portions of the city were destroyed, the area laid waste was only four hundred and thirty-six acres, or less than a square mile, while the aggregate loss did not exceed sixty million dollars. The city of Moscow, several times before grievously afflicted by fires, was made almost a smoking waste upon its occupation by the French in 1812, when, by order of the Russian governor Rostopchin, it was set on fire in 500 places at once, and 11,840 houses burned to the ground, besides palaces and churches. Hamburg, in Germany, was visited by a fire on the 5th of May, 1842, which continued four days and destroyed one-third of the city. In the United States, the most memorable conflagration, prior to that which has just devastated Chicago, was the Great Fire in New York, in 1835, which extended from east of Broadway and south or below Wall Street, destroying 648 stores, the Merchants Exchange, and the South Dutch Church. Loss estimated at $20 million. Other great fires occurred in Charleston, South Carolina, April 27, 1838, when 1,158 buildings, covering 145 acres, were burned. In New York, again, September 6, 1839, lost ten million two hundred dollars in pittsburgh april tenth eighteen forty five one thousand buildings lost six million dollars in quebec may twenty eighth eighteen forty five fifteen hundred buildings and in june of the same year thirteen hundred buildings in new york july nineteenth eighteen forty five three hundred and two stores and dwellings Loss six million dollars. In Albany, September ninth, eighteen forty eight, twenty four acres burned over and three hundred buildings destroyed. Loss three million dollars. In St. Louis, July ninth, eighteen forty nine, three hundred and fifty buildings. Loss three million dollars. In San Francisco, May third, eighteen fifty one, twenty five hundred buildings. Loss, three and a half million dollars, and again June twenty second, eighteen fifty one, five hundred buildings lost three million dollars, and at Portland, Maine, July fourth, eighteen sixty six, when ten thousand people were rendered homeless and fifteen millions of property destroyed. What is spared to Chicago, from the Chicago Tribune? Our columns have been so extensively occupied during the past week with reports of the enormous losses of life and property in the late fire that there is some danger that the damage sustained will be overestimated. True, we have seen 2,500 acres in the most central portion of the city swept bare, 20,000 buildings destroyed, and 100,000 persons rendered homeless, the total pecuniary loss being not less than $300 million but we still have a great deal left. We may roughly estimate the situation as follows. Above 50,000 persons have left the city. Population remaining, 280,000. Five grain elevators were burned, with 1,600,000 bushels of grain, leaving us with 11 grain warehouses intact, containing 5 million bushels. One half of our stocks of pork products were burned up, with the same proportion of flour. Of lumber, 50 million feet were burned, 
The stock remaining is 240 million feet. Of coal, 80,000 tons were burned up. We have 79,000 tons on hand. Our stock of leather was decreased one quarter, the value of that burned up being $95 million. The greater portion of the stocks of groceries, dry goods, and boots and shoes were burned up, with more than one-half the ready-made clothing, but the quantities destroyed were scarcely equal to more than a three-week supply and are now being rapidly replaced. Not more than 10% of the currency was destroyed by the fire. We have 30,000 houses left standing, and our real estate could not burn up. A careful average of these larger items, with smaller ones that need not be enumerated, shows that the city of Chicago has suffered a loss of not less than 20 nor more than 25 percent of her total assets, real and personal. The loss is a great one, but so far from irretrievable that we may confidently hope to see a return to former prosperity ere long. The ratio of increase during the past 34 years has averaged 10.5 percent per annum, this rate would restore the status of a month ago within three years, making every due allowance for the terrible setback experienced. There can be no doubt that five years hence, at most, the exhibit of population, wealth, commerce, and manufactures will be greater than a month ago. The exact area of the conflagration, from the Chicago Journal. Careful measurements and calculations of the area of the burnt district of the city place its length from its starting point to its place of ending at four and a half miles and its average width a little more than one mile. Along the south side lake shore, however, and westward five blocks, Harrison Street is the southern limit of the conflagration, and the distance from that street to Fullerton Avenue, its northern limit, is only three and a half miles. The point of the fire's beginning on the west side was about one mile south of Harrison Street, southwesterly. The number of acres laid waste is not far from 2,300. A pretty careful computation places the number of buildings of all kinds destroyed at 18,000, of which at least 1,500 were substantial business structures. The actual total of the pecuniary losses is estimated at $300 million, but no fair estimate that we have yet seen or heard of places the grand total below $200 million. We still believe the latter will cover all the losses. End of Section 7